After a lot of consideration, I can think of no way that a primitive African tribe such as the Dogon, without any sophisticated astronomical equipment whatsoever, can discover by themselves that Sirius has a companion star which is invisible to the naked eye. Amandingi's words to the initiates of the Sigi ritual have the ring of truth. With insight, the Dogon have probed the mechanism of the universe. They know what science tells us, that the seed and the star are the self-same substance, elements of a single universal consciousness. years, L. George Lawrence, a Silesian-born electronics engineer, has used an abandoned prospector's cave in the California desert as a base of operations for research in a new science called biocommunications. His purpose in choosing such a remote location was to eliminate man-made electronic interference during a series of remarkable experiments. I started my Volgon plans in 1962 while I was an, eng an engineer in the uh, aerospace industry. And at that time, it was one of our goals to develop uh, jam-proof uh, missile components. Now, uh, after much uh, experimentation, my attention turned to uh, living plant material, in particular to plant leaves. Plant leaves are able to react to gravitational changes, to temperature changes, to electrostatic fields and so on, simultaneously. Now, a man-made sensing device cannot do this. So, uh, as time went on, and I experimented with these uh, various plants and plant leaves, I noted very unusual reaction patterns. Now, at that time, I thought that my equipment was defective. It did not occur to me that I was witnessing a profound consciousness in these living plants. But I was an engineer, not some Boltzmann. I needed to perfect a machine-based system just for the specific purpose of uh, finding out the truth about consciousness in plants. And to my extreme surprise, it worked. There is indeed a consciousness in the plant uh, kingdom. Lawrence's latest equipment differs significantly from that of other researchers. It dispenses with the necessity to use electrodes directly attached to the subject. He has found through experiments that living vegetable tissue perceives signals with greater sensitivity than electronic sensors. These tiny mustard seeds removed from a nutrient bath at the point of germination will act as antennae to receive distant biological radiation. Emerging into the desert night, Lawrence prepares his equipment. At the end of a Faraday tube, he inserts the seeds which will monitor the signals. A rotating beam splitter will eliminate radio interference. Consulting a star map, Lawrence searches for the constellation Ursa Major, the Great Bear. It is to celestial coordinates 10 hours, 40 minutes, by 56 degrees, that he will direct his instrument. Lawrence scans the heavens, waiting for the seeds to receive a distant signal.
After analysis of his experiment by the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., L. George Lawrence believes the living plant tissue in his instrument is receiving a message from outer space. Plants communicate with each other. It would also appear, in our case, that we have actually eavesdropped on a communication that has gone on for millions and millions of years. And by some freak accident, by simply allowing a sensing instrument to remain pointed at the sky, we were able to intercept what seems to be a universal truth. Amandingi, the star is the germinating seed sending out its shoots that are the creation of all life on earth and of all life throughout the universe. Yeah. 